Hello and welcome back to my channel and today we're taking a look at Russian train 2 which basically means we are on a train you can explore the train and walk around the train and apparently you're in Russia or you are Russian no idea but here's the thing so this game probably is one of those chill out and you know do your own thing and I do like them also older trains considering I actually grew up in the times when these older trains were driving on the rails I just want to see how accurate this been actually kind of you know made in a game also i'm kind of curious about the age of the devs of this game because you know you you have to you have to live through that time period to make a train that looks like that old train because probably you guys never actually seen one now talking about the display and stuff we're going with a native 4k maximum frame rate no vertical sync and foe gonna be at 90. i do not know why do we need more than 90 in a train but we'll see Graphically, everything is uh, cranked up as much as we can, and audio-wise, um, to be fair, audio is pretty loud, at least in the menu. I think it was just a track who just stopped, so that's good. And uh, yeah, that's about it, so let's just jump in new game. MSI Afterburner, upper left, and let's see where we're gonna go from there, so let's check this out. Okay, surprisingly enough, we are actually in the train. You begin your journey to Vladivostok. At the moment, you have boarded the electric train to get to Stopsy Station. It will take you 2 hours and 20 minutes to get. Arrival is at 10. Okay. And we are greeted by glorious 35 frames. Now... <laughs> to be fair... I am a little bit blown away. For those who think this is like a Metro Exodus or any post-apocalyptic game train, I must say you are wrong. This is exactly the train I used to take in my childhood. This is uh, kind of like a leather but not really seats. Uh, this vent here gives you heat and trust me you want to put your feet there when it's uh, winter. Windows open by pressing buttons on the end of these two things um, and you just slide it upwards or you can just open it inwards. And usually everyone who's behind this window, so for instance this woman here would be screaming loudly, close the damn window. Uh, luggage compartments above head, uh, these usually are not actually used and um, well, it is how it is. And exactly as back in the day, people are looking quite miserable because the sound you hear, this is what you get in most of the train carriages. There are train carriages where you do have the electric motor and usually, I do believe it was the first, third and the sixth carriage. And uh, people are usually trying to avoid those particular carriages because of uh, never-ending electrical noise. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if this is a death. <laughs> Because <laughs> he kind of stands out. We have a sushi chef as well. Nice. Right, so let's see if we can move. Oh, we can move a bit faster. There should be... Okay, emergency brake is not present. There's usually an emergency brake over here that uh, some people can go and yank if they feel like it. Train will stop, police will be called and stuff like this. Um, yeah. Oh dear, this is, this is exactly how it is. Right, how do we open doors? Can we open doors? We cannot open doors. Interesting. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure if this is... I think this world is on the see them getting rendered in as we go with the same scenery. Literally the same three trees are just going around and around again. Okay. Yeah. Usually trains are much closer than this actually, so this is some very good idea how far apart they should be, but that's not the case. Uh, one of the reasons why you are not allowed to stick your head out of the window once it opens because the oncoming train will probably take it off. The gap in a door 
that's realistic. To be fair, these doors, <laughs> after all the years of service, would actually not even close properly and they would rattle like just bang against each other during the drive. So that's quite realistic. Um, this game said that you can actually wander around the train and do things, but I'm not seeing what I can do. But let's go to this guy whose hair color is changing a lot. Can I talk with him? I'm taking take a seat. Back, left, leftward, rightward. <laughs> okay, um, that's a lot of controls right there. So, are we just supposed to walk around one carriage for like foreseeable future and just look out the window? This is like an actual, what do you call it, a door handle here, which is kind of hard to press. Uh, it's not like this, but maybe it's just a even older option. And yeah, if you're actually going between the carriages, this thing is moving. Now, fun fact, the in-between carriages are often used by drunk people for toilet, because there's no toilets on board. And yeah, if you go through, it smells pretty badly in there. Uh, I want to go to the next carriage, please. Can I do that? I do not think so. There's got to be something I can do here, right? Can I talk to any of these people? train or overnight train, there's one main uh, carriage pulling all of these, they're not connected to the power line above, usually using uh, diesel instead of coal. Yeah. Okay, how, how do we spend two hours here? I mean, this is getting very realistic, you get bored very quickly. You don't usually harass the passengers, but... Uh, only survive this sound for that long. But really, there's got to be something we can do here. No, 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 there's got to be some button I can use. Maybe I can start a fight. So apparently there are quite few trains you can wander around, so this is, I would say, a very regular passenger train. Uh, they usually go in between places, about 20-25 stops on one route. Then you have the overnight or intercontinental trains that go from one country through a majority of other countries. Layout is a bit different and I was kind of hoping to actually get into that because you get a little bit of a cabin which you share with uh, two to four people, well usually it's two. But, uh, yeah, it depends. Then you have multiple classes. You have the first class, well, kind of first class, or at least the clean class. And then you have the peasant class, where you're just sharing it with four drunk dudes and stuff like that. Oh, look! We can actually see the train is arcing. That is pretty nice. To be fair, I'm surprised this game even exists. Like, who would want to drive on a train for two hours? But here I am. I guess it's... I want to drive on the train for two hours. I think you can just barely make out the button here. 
Okay, let's, uh, let's just enjoy the scenery for a little bit, shall we? Let's give it a go to move through the carriages here, because uh, I know this game is an early release title, but all do I need to press mouse with the mouse space? Since this game is early release, this might be a glitch that I'm unable to transition between the carriages. But to be fair, most of these carriages actually look exactly the same, so the meat and potatoes would be this uh, intercontinental overnight trade rather than your regular beat up stuff. And the button for sitting down is not opening the doors, which is a bit sad. Oh well, anyway. I would say this was a pretty fun one. Performance wise, yeah, 35 frames, but hell, we don't have a combat and the game actually looks pretty nice. I would uh, even go as far as saying this might even be a demo, like for the reflections and stuff, because it is actually quite realistically made and I wouldn't say it's photorealistic, but it's, it's good enough. You know, end of the day. So yeah, that's the Russian train stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. See you all next time. Over now.